next artisan is a, a dear, dear friend. And not only that, but just a terrific, like, I do not know what it is they cannot do. They, are uh, they do makeup, they do performance, they are a dancer. It's incredible. Your mind is blown anytime you're near them. Please welcome Samantha Staten. Can you hear us? I can. Hello. Hello. So glad to have you. Oh, I'm so happy to be here. So grateful. Amazing. Uh, so you have a, a quick little intro than a video, correct? Yes, that is correct. Lead the way. <laughs> Beautiful. Well, hello, angels. Thank you so much for joining this Renaissance Fair on this fine eve. My name is Samantha Satan, they, them, she, her. And today I'm going to be sharing some titillating tips. I just want to say tits on camera, but titillating tips on trans feminine makeup. Now, you may be wondering, you know, why are we getting a makeup class? There's a whole world of YouTube out there to explore. And that is precisely why I offer makeup classes. There is literally hours upon hours, days upon days of footage to sift through. And most of it doesn't concern itself with the trans experience. In fact, most of it consists of repetitive information, techniques that don't work for everyone or every situation. And half the time, they are chock filled with gimmicks and marketing scams. So in this upcoming video, I will be sharing tips that I have learned as a makeup artist for trans folks. And as a non-binary femme myself, I've learned, I know what, what works with my face and what does not. Um, as you watch, please consider asking some questions in the chat feature. And when the video is complete, I will attempt to answer as many as possible in whatever time we have left. So to bias as much time as possible, I'm going to pull that up now. Please enjoy. <laughs> Before considering anything makeup related, it is important to have a skincare routine that matches your skin type. For most folks, cleansing your face at least once a day, preferably at night, is an absolute must, followed by some nourishment in the form of something like a serum or an exfoliator that is used to combat your skin's impurities, something like dryness or discoloration. Depending on your needs, you want to vary your serums or only apply exfoliators once or maybe even a few times a week. You can emulsify and seal in that nourishment with a moisturizing agent. And of course, if you are planning to be out and about, sunscreen is a necessity. And that goes for all skin types and all shades of skin. Please note that if you use makeup and sunscreen, it may be a smart decision to get in the habit of double cleansing, which simply means washing your face with one product, uh, for many it's like an oil cleanser, and then going in with a second product. This allows the initial product to attack the makeup and the second product to cleanse the skin without the barrier of makeup in the way. A routine is going to give you lasting results if you keep up with it, but you should also consider applying a moisturizer right before makeup to promote dewy, lifelike skin and avoid the cake phase. It will also provide your skin some moisture so it doesn't have to produce its own oil as quickly, which will result in the breaking down of your makeup. You also have the option of using face primers, setting sprays and lip balms and waiting a good like five to 10 minutes before applying any makeup products. This will give your face prep some time to absorb that product. Some folks really enjoy starting makeup with eyes because if there is any fallout, it is very easy to clean up. I like to take a bit of primer and swipe off any fallout. However, I do recognize that when I start with face products first, I tend to obsess less with the eye makeup and it saves me time because I'm less interested in perfecting every detail. A lot of YouTube videos out there in the world will have you think applying a full face of full coverage, two or three layers of cake face is the only way to hide your features. F that. <laughs> your facial structure, your anatomy, everything about your body is beautiful and perfect the way it is. Maybe you're like me and you're going through hormone therapy. Maybe you've experienced top surgery or facial feminization. Wherever you are in your journey, you are complete and whole and beautiful at every stage. And this means you do not need to layer on foundation like paint on a wall. 
the best practice is to dab a reasonable amount on the back of your hand to warm up the product and blend out excess product. Use a foundation brush to very, uh, very lightly pick up, blend out, then apply a th as thin a layer as possible to the skin. If your skin changes color dramatically when applying foundation that is pretty close to your skin shade, you can likely use less product. I like to use buffing brushes and blending sponges to further blend out my products. In the YouTube and Instagram world, you will come across a wild amount of folks who swear by their marketing scams. Concealer tricks are perhaps the most gimmicky of all of them. Online, you'll be told to apply concealer in a triangle, use half the tube doing so, and then to apply a ridiculous amount of baking powder to set and highlight. Those are all gimmicks. Instead, apply a thin layer to the edge of the eye and blend in. Applying as little product as possible directly to any texture skin like under eye wrinkles, it's going to be the best turnout for you. The amount you use depends on the coverage you desire, but please know that the under eye carries some of the most fragile skin on your body, so you want to be gentle and use as little product as possible. Speaking of less product, I beg of you, please don't bake. Now, layering powder can catch fallout and it does highlight your skin at the same time, but the side effects is cake face and accentuated wrinkles. If your skin is telling you like it needs to bake, please just use the thinnest of layers and only place it exactly where you need it. Caking on powder can actually make your skin age. Folks on YouTube rarely teach you that contour, a cool tone product, and bronzer, a warm tone product, are actually two different products with two different purposes. Contour creates shadows and should be applied onto and under the cheekbone, while bronzers create a lift and should be applied onto and above the cheekbone. I like to apply bronzer first and then deepen where needed with contour. In regards to contour highlight, a lot of trans YouTube artists will suggest that we need to cake powder right here to widen our faces because apparently that's what makes us women. <laughs> your face is femme enough. Apply highlight powder only in the areas that will lift your face strategically into your liking and no one else's. When applying any powder, be it contour, bronzer, blush, eyeshadows, you can tap into the pan and immediately dab the brush onto your hand or palette. This often will alleviate patchiness and will control the amount of product you use. You need a surprisingly less amount than you think. When products say they are supposed to last six months to a year, it's partly because there's enough product to last you that long. No matter how fantastic an eyeshadow is, it will always be more pigmented and last longer with less creasing if you use an eye primer. I like to use a finger to warm up and blend out primers, and I even pack it into the brow area before filling them in. For many trans women and femmes who were assigned male at birth, we suffer from the dreaded droopy eye or hooded eye. The best way to counteract sunken or hidden eyelids is to apply a deeper color in the outer thirds and a lighter color in the inner thirds, and use the middle third to marry the two colors together. You may also want to avoid thick eyeliner and opt instead to tight line your eyes and apply maybe something that resembles a smoky wing. Those are five tips any trans femme can walk away with and feel that much more affirmed. I hope you enjoyed the video and until next time, bye bye angels. Yay. Clap, clap, clap. Applause, applause, applause. <laughs> I hope you found that useful, everyone. Um, I'll be sharing those tips throughout uh, again in my career. So, uh, so you, know, you can listen in a little bit more closely. But I, I do invite you to follow me on you know, all the multitudes of platforms, such as Instagram and Facebook and YouTube. I think YouTube's my favorite. Um, you can visit say10studios.com. That's say10studios.com, which houses not only those accounts, but also... Uh, lots of artwork for your perusal. <laughs> um, so for a little bit of background, Say 10 Studios is a queer and trans uh, persons of color art and media studio. Our mission is to amplify QTPOC voices 
to make our to kind of make our mark with counterculture artifacts that we kind of put together to disrupt our cis white heterosexual landscape, right? We, we have taken a step back in recent times to persi uh, participate in social distancing, but our, our mission is not forgotten and we continue to be active in calling for racial justice and equity for all gender and, and sexual minorities. And um, yeah, so now with that all said, um, I'm going to take some questions from our lovely audience. Blue. Well, I did not see any questions in my perusals of the comments, it's but okay. I uh, I'm prepared if you want to. <laughs> I did want to point out how many people loved you using the word titillation. <laughs> uh, Myself included. Cool. <laughs> um, but even like, we'll give it a second, but even if nobody has questions for you right now, uh, that's okay because the raffle item number three is a virtual one-on-one -on -one makeup uh, class featuring you. Um, mm. Ooh, Stephanie asked, can you give us lip tips? Yes, just the tip of my lip, yes. So one of my favorite things to do with lips is, uh, no, um, is to outline the, <laughs> <laughs> outline the perimeter, Sorry. especially in this area and this area here and kind of leave, down here a little bit blank and down here a little bit blank as well in, in uh, when you're using a uh, liner. And what this does, it makes this area recede a little bit further back. And so this area right here can be plumped up. And so you can really, really, really make this dramatic if you have a deeper color on the outer V area and then a lighter color, I'm giving the middle finger, I'm sorry, and the lighter <laughs> color right here. And I, I don't know if you can see it, but here, mm, Ooh, yes, I see it. <laughs> awesome. Uh, Barry asked, how do you hide stubble as a trans feminine person? That is a fantastic question. For me, um, I don't hide my stubble because my stubble is beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> mm -hmm. However, that's not the case for all people. And so what a lot of folks will do is they will take a peachy a salmon color um, color corrector or not even corrector, even uh, something that just looks like a, a warmer and a little bit of a darker concealer. And they take the lightest sheer amount of it and layer it over the areas that are giving you the, the most the most of a headache, right? Um, mm. You don't want to use too much of this kind of color correction because it will, uh, it will attribute to that cake face. You want to use as little bit of product as possible. And if you really think about it, you know, a lot of drag queens will like cake on that lots of red over here. What that actually does, it just mixes in with the foundation. Even if you powder it down, it still mixes in with the foundation. Um, so the thinnest layer is the best and dependent on your skin type, as well as your skin shade, mostly your skin shade, you're going to want to use different kinds of colors and different kinds of quality in the product. Super. Joe asks, What's the best under the radar product right now, you think? Ooh, under the radar. So, okay, there is a black owned Philly local company called Queen's Crown. They are amazing. I've actually worked with them one on one. I had uh, folks in here, like the owner was in my home, in my studio, and I put one of her models in full makeup. And then I, I'm a photographer as well. So, I, I, do, I did her, her photos. And she like still uses them as her profile pictures and stuff. It's really fun. But they have uh, really, really fun eyeshadows. And there's one specific shadow called Gyal, which is my favorite, favorite highlight ever. It is an eyeshadow uh, highlight that I like to poke right in the center here. Today I'm very, very matte, so I don't have uh, any shimmer on because the light doesn't really pick up always well in this room. Um, but that is my one of my favorite, favorite uh, products that obviously not many people know about because it's a local company. Awesome. We're going to do two more questions. Perfect. Uh, so next one is, when is tightening, tight lining the eye better than heavy liner? Ah, yes. So if you're someone who really enjoys that thick, thick eyeliner, do the thick eyeliner. If you're someone who wants just like a, a little bit of like definition, then a little wing or a tight line would be the best solution for you. For me, I have these a little bit of like a sunken eye. If I were to look straight on with you without any makeup on, you might not even see the, the lighter color here at all. And so what I do to enhance the, uh, enhance like the 
the depth of the eye is I will use that tight lighting technique. However, if I used a, a whole wing and I did liquid eyeliner and went all the way through, it's going to really hide all of the work that I put on right here. And that's mm -hmm. really unfortunate. So for those kinds of eyes, I always suggest trying out tight lining first. And if you're someone who really loves a wing, you can tight line right here, but then make this thicker out here. Especially since if you look straight forward, you can barely see this much in my eye anyway. <laughs> <laughs> All right, final question. How to pick eyeshadow colors that look good together? That is a fantastic question that I can I can answer for a very long time. <laughs> <laughs> Fair enough. So <laughs> you with, got five minutes. <laughs> if you think about color theory, there are warm shades, there are cooler shades. Warmer shades are things like the yellows, the oranges. Uh, cooler shades are deeper purples, blues, and such. However, every single color has a warmer and cooler tint to it. So if you think mm -hmm. about um, indigo versus purple versus pastel, they're all in the purple family. They're all in the blue family. But if you add a little bit of warmth, it's it's a little bit more purpley. If you add a little bit of uh, cool tone, it's a bit more indigo. So something that I really like to do is to pick one color story. So I would choose something that's like a nice lavender in the inner corner, a nice purple right here that's nice and warm, and to make that really, really depth at the or deep at the end and really contoured, then you could use the indigo. So you kind of play with the same color family. And another thing you can do is take like really artistic liberties and use uh, opposite colors. So I, I love, love, love a little bit of blue underneath the eye when I have a whole orange, beautiful, like whew, smoky thing going mm. on. It's one of my favorite looks. Ah, oh, that sounds nice. amazing. <laughs> uh, thank you so much again, Samantha, for all of your amazing tips and for lending your expertise. Uh, don't forget if you loved all this and you thought, man, I just really need some personal tips from somebody who knows what the fuck she's talking about. <laughs> uh, a virtual one-on-one -on -one class with Samantha is available as raffle item number three. So bid away. Thank you so much, Samantha. Um, I hope you enjoy the rest of the fair and hopefully we will see each other soon one way or the other. Thank you so much. So grateful for being here. <laughs> take care. Bye -bye. All right, take care.